Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets for the final time in the college football season. I'm your host, Chris Malika, along with Jeff Schwartz, Sammy P, and Will Hill uh, will join us later. But we have one game remaining in the, uh, the FBS college football season, and it is the national championship game between Jeff Schwartz's Washington Huskies and the Michigan Wolverines. That was, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't lean in a little for that. I would have deserved that. But uh, we, yeah, we got... Two unbelievably dramatic games on uh, yeah. on January first. I won't necessarily pl- say two well played games, two crisply played games, two efficiently played games. Um, as I'm sitting there late night chugging his Celsius to try and stay awake for the second game. Oh my! God. But uh, two very dramatic yeah. games with unbelievable finishes, and we ha- should have a very compelling uh, championship game on Monday night. Do the schedule makers not like people on the East Coast? Because probably not. The game kicked off at 9 p.m. It was mm-hmm. halftime at 11. It ended at 1. Yep. And it got much less ratings, obviously. No surprise. Thank you. Fewer people watch that game. It was so late at night. Look, it's a, it's a great way to go out with a bang with a 14 playoff, right? Because for so many years, we've complained about semifinal games being duds. And these were certainly not duds, right? Um, and I think in the end, both the right teams won both games. I mean, Alabama. Yeah, I think so. Alabama outplayed Michigan at certain points in that game. But that was more about like Michigan making mistakes. Mm-hmm that were unforced errors, the, 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 the muff punts, the missed field goals, more than like Alabama, I think really taking that game yeah. from Michigan. And the same um, thing in the second game too. Like if Washington doesn't muff that punt right before halftime, sure. that game I think is headed towards being a blowout. Yes. But counter to that is that also they forced two fumbles, which is like not a thing you do every game. And so if one of those fumbles doesn't hit Washington, I mean, Texas probably scores in that, on those drives anyway. You mean so the, the blue running into his own player and fumbling on his own? That, that, that so that, it, it did Washington didn't like that. That's that a Washington forced fumble. That was when that happened. It was, uh, I, I said, I, I think I tweeted like, I'm done with this game. And I, I turned it off in the family room. I went to go to the shower and I just watched the rest of the game in, my, in the bed on my phone. Cause I was like, I'm just done with this. I'm not watching Washington run the <laughs> score. I mean, when, when you run into your own player like that, and that being said, and we're talking about this a lot in the gambling group chat, Texas had the ball on the 12 yard line with a chance to win the game. And, and I think a lot of quarterbacks hit Mitchell before he's covered, essentially. Yeah. And Quinn Ewers just, and you can see like Sark in those moments too. He's looking at his play sheet, trying to figure out what play to call because he didn't trust Quinn Ewers. And I think in that situation, Quinn Ewers didn't play terribly well in that game. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if he was a uh, little, little concussed after slamming his head into the turf. I hadn't thought about that. Yeah, I, I, well, they, I, I thought about that too. After I tweeted that, I'm like, oh, those four plays, not exactly uh, very, very, but he, very but he, high. Yeah, but, but he threw the ball well previously, though. But those were more down the field throws. Yeah. Um, and those throws in the red zone require a little bit more attention. I mean, the most drama in that game was was if our Arch Manning was going to play. They kept showing him warming up. How and, wild would have that? But if he if if Ewers was concussed and he did have to come into the game and, and won the game, they win the game. It would have been like a two uh, Jalen Hurst thing, right? It would have been. Just, just ridiculous. It would be ridiculous, and then, and and I think also fun with that game was just Matthew McConaughey basically like, I can like do what I want, just like walking the sidelines, it's not great. just like talking to players that aren't playing in the game, talking to players that are playing in the game, mm-hmm. and so uh, you know he's an ambassador I know I for the program. Say, as you're so. the minister of culture, you can do whatever the hell you want. So I'm looking forward to Monday, Bear. I mean, obviously I have a strong rooting interest against Washington, um, but we have the best quarterback possibly in the country playing mm-hmm. in this game. And the thing I, I hate it most coming out of the Washington Texas game was it's very clear Other than the result. Besides the result, I thought they were going to win though. So I mean, I did I did make money on Washington winning at least. Was um, people like, oh, Michael Penix is good? Really? Where you been all year? I just think that it just again it showed unfortunately why the Pac-12 was done because people just didn't pay attention to him this season. Um, now, Jane Daniels is a deserving Heisman. There's, I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. But the, the narrative sort of out of this game is like, oh, Washington's kind of good. Yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah, like they are. they're, they're yeah. good. And I've said this on, other, on my radio show, my Pac-12 show and other things. Good like, and opportunistic. If, if, if Washington, if they were another team and with another logo, yep. you, may, I would, you, bring, I, you bring this I, up later in the game. I probably would like to root for them. You know, like. Oh, okay. All right. I yeah. thought you were going well, no, to. No, no, no. But, you know, but like if they were like, if it was, if it was. Name other West Coast team. Yeah. Like UCLA. I'd be like, heck yeah. Heck yeah. I, I like their coach. I, I like the way he, he calls a the game. Their offense is fun to watch. Their offensive line won, won the Joe Moore where the defense just does enough. Or, or and I saw that, <laughs> I think it was Bobby Carpenter that might have tweeted it out because it was like an Ohio State. Like, if you're a, a non fan of anybody in the playoff and you're like, you know, you kind of get behind Washington. Well coached, good coach, yeah. fun, fun to root, like, fun to yeah. watch. Like, yeah. You, 
but, but I but obviously that purple is. Uh, yeah, really I was going to say you're 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 you're, you're, alma, um, you're you're alumni. And the thing too that gives me a little bit of solace in this game, I think coming up is that the books needed Texas in that game, and they, yes, they didn't badly. get it, and they're going to need Michigan in this game. Yes, everyone's going to be on Washington money line. The points they're going to tease I, I, Washington probably. They, I was talking to someone one one of the sports book directors uh, out in Las Vegas, and they are underwater with Washington futures. And that probably makes me feel, I mean, look, we, we've covered this enough. You've obviously done this for more years than maybe I've been alive that like that when the books need somebody to win, they, they usually they, they get, get it. it, especially when they don't get it the week before, because they needed Texas right. and they didn't get it. Um, I mean, look to the NFL, right? I mean, they, they needed last week, they needed some combination of the Cardinals and the commanders and uh, the Patriots to yeah. win and cover. And they got, they got, they got two a, covers and a win. So it ends up working out in, 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 in the end. Uh, we cover all of this bear on the gambling group chat. It's a lot of fun for the final season with, with you, obviously with Sammy and with Will Hill and myself. And let's hear the gambling group chat. We cover everything in this game. We'll talk a little bit NFL at the end with the number one pick in the draft as well. And then we'll be back on the back end for our best bets for the national championship game. Stay tuned. Final gambling group chat of the college football season is here. We have two games remaining. We have the FCS championship uh, in Frisco between Montana and South Dakota State. And the other one, Monday night, college football playoff championship game, Michigan minus four and a half. 55 and a half is the uh, total. I want to congratulate Will, Jeff, Sammy on having the Huskies against Texas plus the points. And I want to congratulate the lone wolf there. The good-looking man there, just to be uh, the second man on the screen there, Sammy P. Stood tall, steadfast on Michigan. Got the job done. Congratulations, gentlemen. I had the under in that Rose Bowl game. Did not go well, and I did lay the points with Texas. So I had a, I had a less than stellar New Year's evening, but I'm happy everybody in the group chat won. Makes everybody a winner except for me, which is fine. That's I'm, I'm used to that by now. But uh, great job of you guys handicapping those two games. And uh, just curious where where your initial thoughts are i guess there's some are there are a couple of fours out there there's a forward circa uh, and, and and sammy i'll start with you you liked michigan in that rose ball game against alabama uh, first thoughts here in the uh, national title game against washington i was hoping to lay three to be perfectly honest i thought that was a possibility because when we saw this open up in vegas at the very midpoint of the fourth quarter between washington and texas we saw Superbook hang three and a half. And at that point, Washington's up 13 points. And if they keep that track and win the game decidedly, we're talking about even more sexiness on the Huskies. And I, I thought I was going to lay three. Like, I was like, all right, I'm going to lay three right away. But then what happens? Texas crawls back in. And DeBoer looks a little bleak down the stretch. And that susceptibility, which we just wrote about for Fox, foxsports.com, that little stretch of time, move the line from three and a half to four and a half. And I, I'm going to wait it out. I want to lay Michigan. Uh, Washington money line is probably going to be the most public side um, of the pod, mm -hmm. the postseason. Penix is awesome. I still don't know that Washington is as good though as Michigan. So I'm willing to find out. Yeah. I, I just, I have a hard time seeing well, Washington being able to stop the run here. I just, uh, the, the fascinating matchup, obviously Penix and those receivers against, you know, the Michigan defense, that's obviously, that's that's just a, a fantastic matchup when, when you look at the play calling of DeBoer with all the offensive firepower of Washington. Can Michigan get a pass rush? Can they get a pass rush without blitzing? That'll be interesting. But to me, it's just Michigan's going to be able to line up and, and snap the ball and, and run for five, six, seven yards of carry and just be able to grind on Washington. And when you can run on a team, you can do anything on them. And you know, this is going to sound a little dismissive and Washington's better than TCU was last year, but it does feel like Washington does have a little TCU in them where they're not dominating these games. They're just surviving these games. And, you know, we've seen it in the NFL. These teams eventually that catches up to you. I just think Michigan, I, I it just feels like Harbaugh wins his title, rides off into the sunset, goes and coaches the Chargers, whoever in the NFL. I, I do think Michigan wins the game. I don't love laying points against Penix here, but I am confident Michigan wins this game. Well, 
Noted Washington hater, Jeff Schwartz is here in the, in the building. Um, I think it's very clear. I, I'm not betting against Washington at this point. They've won 10 straight games now <laughs> by 10 points or less. Like, I just, it's, it seems foolish to do that. They'll, they'll be underdogs now for the fourth time in the last five games, right? Oregon State, Oregon, and Texas. And they continue did they, to. Did they really close as an underdog in Oregon? That's right. They yeah, did. They did, yeah. Oh. They closed out Oregon. And I bet we both bet Washington that game because yeah. that was that, yeah. that silly to us. Um, obviously, look, their fishing numbers are sort of nowhere near what we've seen in previous champ. It doesn't mean they, they can't win this game. Um, but let's review sort of what we saw on on Monday, right? So Alice, so Michigan wins a game where they didn't play all terribly well, right? I mean, McCarthy was a little bit off. I think he's better than people give him credit for, but he didn't play terribly well at moments in that game. The the special teams were bad and they won. Like they won in in a, playing a game that wasn't their best. On the other hand, Washington guys, Michael Penix has been good this year. He was on a whole nother level against Texas. Like that was the best he's played all season long by far, avoiding pressure and making throws down the field. His top four wide receiving targets caught 19 of 20 passes. I mean, it was an unbelievable performance. He was, he was, he checked the entire game. And if he plays that well against Michigan, Washington's probably going to win the game. But he plays a little bit less, they probably won't. And that being said, guys, Texas had the ball at the 12 yard line with 15 seconds left to win that game. And a halfway decent quarterback puts the ball right on Mitchell on fourth down, and that game's over, and Texas wins. So despite all of that Washington playing as well as they did, and Michael Penix playing out of his mind, again, the game was close. Every game they play is close. And it's Michigan, the team, to finally take them down. Michigan has many different ways to win, in my opinion. Uh, they can run the football. They can play action pass. They can move the pocket. Washington allowed points to Utah this year. They allowed points to Stanford this season. That's why they're dogs again, because defensively, they're not as stout. Again, 31 points. Texas had two turnovers, had a bunch of punts. And down again, at the end, they had the ball in the 12-yard line to go win that game. So, again, I'm not really betting against Washington at this point because they continue to win these type of games. But their profile seems like a team that would lose to a Michigan in this matchup. How much do you think the – it remind me a little bit in a way of the Ohio State team in 2002 that won the national title, that won all those close games. Certainly were not as good as Miami and certainly not as good as some of the – but they, they wound up winning. Yeah, maybe they had a little TCU in them. And they also have a little bit of that Oklahoma 2000 in them where – you get the sense that that team is genuinely pissed off that Penix didn't win the Heisman. Yes. And I think there are people out there now maybe questioning their vote uh, as to whether Roma Dunze should have won uh, the Bolitnikov as well. If you like, how much does that galvanization of maybe like pissed off at the world, inferiority? Like, I, I remember the, 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 the 2000 national championship game where Oklahoma played Florida State and Miami probably should have been in the game instead of instead of Florida State. But I remember the coin toss. And I remember Torrance Marshall, Oklahoma linebacker, like I'm standing around the sideline and like in like Winky's out there for the and he's like, we're, we're going to get our boys Heisman tonight. And like and like because they felt yeah. obviously Hypel should have won. Like that was a team that was pissed off and ready to prove a point. Like maybe they weren't the most talented, maybe they weren't the best, but they made plays, they found a way to win. They and like, how much does that make up for like a perceived talent gap? Obviously, for Washington, it has, and that's why I'm not betting against Washington. This game, like, I'm not, I'm not laying either side of this game because Washington continues to prove in these moments that they have whatever it is to win these games. the The end of that game was the first time all season that Kalen DeBoer even sniffed like a a coaching mistake. Mm -hmm. You know, like he hadn't, he had done that all season long. They they have been they've been so well coached, so prepared. They don't turn the ball over. They don't make critical errors. They don't typically have special teams mistakes. Even though obviously we saw they muffed that punt. Their kicker makes all the kicks. Like they they do everything that's needed to win these games. Kalen DeBoer, you know, he he goes for a fourth down, which I think is fantastic. He's aggressive. He never looks panicked. So yes, in, 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 they talked about being an underdog to Oregon, an underdog to Texas. The one thing that's interesting though is that heading into the Texas game, Michael Penix, and it was very confident. He said before the game, like, this isn't the 49ers defensive line. Right. His comments about Michigan so far are a little bit different. Yeah. You know, like, so like they know Michigan's a tougher test um, in this game, guys. And so uh, look, it, it's it's really a, it, it's a it's a matchup of different styles. If Michigan runs the ball forty five times, I think we agree they win this game, right? If they have to get into a shootout, probably not the best game. But I will say, I think we're sleeping on McCarthy a little bit, Sammy. Like I just think that McCarthy is better than we give him credit for. He's only lost one game. and he's played well. like he he didn't play he didn't make all the throws against Bama, but when it mattered the most, guys, he made the throws that mattered. He had three passing touchdowns against Alabama. Look at the quarterbacks this year that did that across the board in the SEC. Not a lot of them did that. 
I still think, look, I mean, we could talk about motivation and all that. I know guys in Michigan. Harbaugh has been playing this soft card with them for months. I mean, he came out before the title game and said, they think you're soft as shit. Because that's all anybody's talked about. Michigan is soft. The Big Ten is soft. Your defense isn't as good as Alabama's. Harbaugh, lo- Harbaugh would bottle that and sell it on Ann Arbor's campus if he could. So I think both teams come into this with a lot to prove. Michigan sacked Milro six times. And, guys, here's the craziest stat of that entire game. For as good as Alabama got later in the season on offense, Michigan was the first team all season – to hold Alabama under 300 yards of total offense. The first team, the first team and the last team. This defense is good. And the biggest arguments I was getting in on social, people were telling me, oh, you four-eyed nerd, Alabama's got better (laughs) players on defense. (laughs) Sorry I said that. That might be true. They probably have more first round picks. And I probably am a nerd. But Michigan's total defense. But we love you anyway. Up to back is better. Michigan's total defense is better than Alabama's best players, period. And they proved it. Yeah, I mean, if Michigan doesn't struggle on special teams, they probably win that game by double digits. I mean, muffed punt, missed extra point, missed field goal. Bama's making 50-yard field goals. If And again, maybe that's something to look at going forward. But if Michigan is just decent on special teams against Bama, they win that game by double digits. And maybe we look at them different. Like, wow, this team is really just a dominant force. So to me, it's Michigan. I, I you know, I don't I don't think I was dismissive of Washington last week. I thought it was last team with the ball kind of game, high scoring, toss up game, take the points. Um, and I, you know, Jeff mentioned first down at the 12. I really thought in, in real time right there, yeah. Texas is going to steal this game. And boy, that what, what a classic game. What an all time. I mean, that was just an all-time melt if Washington gives that game away. That's right there with Bill Buckner. That's right there with, you know, uh, 28-3 in the Super Bowl. The Falcons, that's on that list because that's just an all-time giveaway if Texas steals that game. But I just think Michigan, I I, I like their offensive line versus a smaller Washington front. I think that's the matchup that I just can't get out of my head here. That's why I like Michigan. Yeah, I, I think that's what Sammy brought up too. And I think that's the important. It's very rare you get a team who's number one in the country or in a way, yeah, they're number one going in the playoff. Like that has the opportunity to like play the perceived slight car that, and you can motivate uh, your, your team, but they don't think you're this, they don't think you're that. And in, in a, in a strange way, the, the, the spying and the, the cheating scandal has kind of brought this, this group even tight, tighter together. But, but you're right. It's funny about those special teams miscues too. Well, like I, I don't think there was anybody out there who thought that that kid fall was going to hang on to the ball and not oh, fumble man. it into the end zone. And Alabama was going to recover for a winning touchdown there. That's one of those plays. I mean, he's probably seen it four or five times and you don't want to give him too much credit. Cause he did muff it to begin with. He muffs it at the five, but he picks it up. He's got like a foot in his own end zone. He has to just not only <laughs> pick it up cleanly, but get it out of his end zone and then, uh, you know, uh, absorb the hit and hold on to the ball. The ball's in the wrong hand where he gets hit right where the ball is. Man, it's I mean, and good thing it happened. Not just I mean, betting the side who you're rooting for aside, that would have just you feel bad for a kid if he were to just lose a game like that. But just yeah, incredible to watch that and rewatch that and say how does he he hang on to that football there? Hey, what's the line if there's no yeah, I, I, like, punts or kicks, Bear? Like, let's just say this is a flag football game. What's the line? No punts and no kicks. <laughs> Michigan won. No punt. Hmm. But if it's if you turn it into no punts, no kicks, and you turn it into like a seven on seven like game, then, then aren't you going to like move up panics and those receivers a, a little bit more? Mm, I don't know, but then you don't deal with the Michigan punter and the Michigan return men and the Michigan special team. True. I don't know. Maybe it's a dumb I thought, question. I thought they've been fine on special <laughs> teams all year. I thought that was an outlier, kind of a fluky, just bad game, bad snap. They, they've been fine on special teams all year. So I'm sure, look, I'm sure, you know, knowing Harbaugh, he's got a week to clean that up. He's going to drill the special teams in him. I'm sure they'll be more buttoned up on special teams for the title game here. So here's a question people on the West Coast are, are asking about, about Washington, because obviously we see the line, you see this sort of advanced you know, data about where they're sort of ranked in the country compared to other teams. If their name was USC instead of Washington, same exact stat profile, same exact way they're playing. Sammy, I'll ask you first because I, you make these numbers. Like, is is you is this game three points a pick 'em, or the, is this game changing all the number if the name says USC on the front and not Washington? 
Mm, in a traditional year, maybe, but not this year because Washington has an NFL quarterback that's probably a first rounder. I, I don't think it's that big of a difference. But historically, if you see USC, you know, especially getting points, that's going to be a popular play. I, I think maybe a half a point or a point, maybe it's four, three and a half. Um, it's an interesting question for sure. But I, I mean, anytime you get a very sexy offense with a really good quarterback, that turns into the public dog especially if they're obviously in that role you know um like if caleb williams was in this game he would get a lot of public money usc money line would be very popular washington money line would be very popular coming into this game i think the other fascinating point too about you know the west coast and all that look there is a world and i, I like michigan in this game doesn't mean michigan's gonna win i mean washington could very easily win they're a, a small underdog there is a possibility and i thought about this for a couple of days now where washington is the best team in the country and Oregon is the second best team in the country, right? Like there's a possibility mm -hmm. where that's yep. true because Washington runs the table, yep. wins every single game and Oregon lost to Washington twice by three. That is a very real possibility. And still we're, we're not talking about Oregon and we're not talking about but Georgia. Why? I mean, look what Georgia did all season. That was mean. Don't do this to me. That was don't, mean. Don't, that I was mean, mean, Sammy. I mean, that was mean. That's true. Oregon Personal probably foul, does beat Texas, yards, though. Automatic so I, first I, I, down. That's that's okay. Just, yeah, just, a just mean. Just just dig just dig just dig it right into my heart. There's no just, digging. Just I'm just when is gonna... back. <laughs> no, there's a less a less. There is a non-zero percent chance that 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 is true. Now I think Georgia. I think Georgia. I think Georgia is still the best team in the country, and they just happened to play their worst game of the year and didn't get in a couple calls went against them and they lost to Alabama, but. But no, you, does, you, you're right. Does Oregon, does the Oregon Liberty result basically, does it help the committee be like, we're not putting group of five in the playoff unless they're like a, a Utah or no, Boise that's State? What you, want. you want one of those like, teams in every year, right? You, it's, like Liberty that, would have been, if it was a 12 team playoff, it would have been like Florida State Liberty would have been the, the, the matchup. It, now, it, Florida State would have obviously probably played a bunch of their starters. They would have scored zero points against. And, against that, and that was my, my, my oh, you got to put him in. You got to give him a chance. I'm like, it's, foot, it's college football, it's much different. In the NCAA tournament, you don't want that. Like, if you've got a special team, like like Boise State was, or like TCU was with Dalton when they won the Rose Bowl, Utah 08, like, yeah, yeah, like, like that, yeah. that's fine. But no, who who other than us who just got happened to get a discounted price on Oregon when they <laughs> fall behind early wants to <laughs> wants to see that? Like, like but we need to make it fair and inclusive and everybody gets in and gets a chance because all conferences and records are created. I, I, I now, now you, now you, now you hit a nerve on got me. You angry? Yeah. yeah. He got me angry now. Yeah. I, 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 I think what we're going to see a little bit of a, like the, the second half Michigan game plan that we saw against Penn state. I think we're going to see a lot of that where I think they threw the one pass, but officially it didn't go down as a pass. I think it was PI yes. on the call. Like, I, I think that's the way, Michigan just kind of bleeds this game out and, and kind of pulls away in, in, in the second half. I, I, I agree. Like Michigan's the side that I want to play. I wish I could have gotten in at three and a half or four, but I'm, I'm going like, to, I'm going to think I'm going to be like Sammy. I'm going to wait it out and, uh, and, and see where we go. I have, I have enough exposure on Michigan and some, some cross board parlays with a bunch of stuff that I just really need them to win. So, but, but yeah, I, I, I can see them just kind of, Running, I thought they got away from that a little bit too much in the Rose Bowl. Just run, running Edwards and, and, and running Quorum and kind of because they were kind of having their way for a bit there. But I, I think against Washington, we saw Baxter and Texas have some success, and we saw Oregon run for over six yards a pop. SC I think was over seven yards a pop. So I, I still think that's the best way to beat him. Just kind of beat him up at the line of scrimmage, control that, you keep keeping Penix off the field. So, I, like, w w would that lean toward it? Will, we, would you consider going, what, under, what I say, 56, 55, 55 56? Yeah, there's a, 50, a 56 at circa 55 and a half. Would you consider maybe going under if you think that's the way the game is going to play out? Yeah, and, uh, you know, we always talk about, you know, par parlays in terms of being correlated. If you like Michigan, don't you sort of like the under? You figure they'll be able to get pressure on Penix, run the ball, slow the game down, where if you like Washington, they have to win a shootout and the game has to be in the 30. So I like Michigan. So, yeah, I think an under probably uh, goes better with that. And, again, I just – I felt like this – you know, I think we were texting during the game. There was uh, – 
pressure on Harbaugh. At least I felt there were, there was probably some pressure on Harbaugh. Get the monkey off his back because if he'd been there 10 years, and let's just assume, you know, they lose to Bama, he goes to the NFL. He'd been there 10 years. They win zero playoff games. They lose in the first round three years in a row. That would have been a very, you know, lukewarm sort of uh, tenure at Michigan. To get the monkey off his back, I felt this way once they tied the game against Bama. I felt they were going to win in overtime. Once they scored first, I didn't think Bama mm-hmm. was going to match. I just feel like that's their moment. We see this in the NCAA tournament sometimes where a team has a close uh, close call. They win on a buzzer beater, and that's their one scare for the tournament. They go on to win. I just feel like Michigan survived their scare, and they're holding up the trophy here Monday night. That'd be awesome. It would save me a lot of it would save me it would save me a lot of a lot of torment on social media for years to come. So if that ends up happening, I just look. It's it's funny. I see Michigan fans already in social media being like, "Well, they can't catch every pass." Yes, they can. No, they can. They will. Like that. Like fifty fifty balls for Washington are ninety five five. Their receivers catch everything. So you know, Michigan's game plan I think is going to be we're going to sit back in zone and we're going to let them get their yards inside. The 20, basically, or outside the 20. And when you get in the red zone, we're going to clamp down. They're, they're, the red zone offense for Washington isn't as good as their field offense, but that's mostly because they get a lot of a lot of touchdowns on big plays. Like they're, not in, they're not in the red zone very often. One thing to, to, to look for, Dylan Johnson's injury. Now, Ryan Grubb, their offense coordinator, said he's going to play on the radio. Uh, and he's been beat up most weeks now for the last, like, six. Like, he'll, he was limping yeah. against Oregon, Oregon State, against Washington, uh, excuse me, Washington State. And, 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 and if he doesn't play, it's a big deal because – after they played Oregon the first time, that's October 14th, um, the next couple of games, teams went, we're just dropping into zone coverage. And they played decently well relative to the rest of, 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 of the schedule for Washington. And then Dylan Johnson came along. And when Dylan Johnson's averaging seven yards a carry, you're not dropping in soft zone anymore. And so if he's not there, their backups are okay. They're not great. Um, wh- I think Michigan just sits back in zone and says, hey, man, we're not letting you beat us deep, which is what Texas did in the second half. In the second half of this game, Washington scored one offensive touchdown with with uh, with 11 minutes left in the third quarter. No more touchdowns the rest of the game. Three field goals. So I think Michigan just sits back and says, we're not going to let you beat us deep, and we'll try to clamp down as we get closer to the red zone when, when there's less space in the field, there's less room to maneuver. You throw the ball outside the numbers now. Our safeties are able to get there much easier. And so, um, again, it, it's it's a game where we have contrasting styles, and we'll see which style wins out. But I'm, Washington just continues to win these games, which I—, I, I, I you're 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 kidding and saying it in jest a little bit on the on the ninety five five as a fifty fifty ball ball. But they caught nineteen of twenty passes. I, I, I know, but uh, <laughs> RR, is that something that is regress at some point that is ultimately not going to happen? Is it panics and, and him putting the ball in a casual yeah. spot? Is it the receivers making great plays that maybe won't continue? Like like I I, I know I know you're kind of kidding with it when you say 95-5. I, I've, watched, I, I've rooted against Washington enough now where I, it's it's the most frustrating part of watching them play. So two things. One is that Penix is very accurate. But one technical thing their wide receivers do really well is they don't put their hands up for the ball until the ball is there. So yep. there was a play at the end of, near the end of the Texas game where Roma Duce caught the ball and the Texas cornerback was still looking back for the ball. And he Rome was out of bounds already because as they're running, right? And they just kind of like put their hands out to catch the ball like this because the ball is perfectly thrown. If you put your hands out early, the DB sees that and tries to swat away or put his hand up in the air. So part of it is the, the, their wide receivers do a great job of technically catching the football. And then Michael Penix, again, puts the ball on target. And so I'm curious to see, obviously, if he, dude, he, again, if he plays as well as he did on, on Monday, they're winning the championship. It just, it just is what it is. Um, but if he plays a little bit less, if they can force him into, by the way, that was the the best game he had played all season under pressure. He had not looked that good all season under pressure, guys. Uh, he, he just was incredible. He was a heat check game. He was he was marvelous. He played great. Texas pressured him, and Michigan's going to have to pressure him. Different than Alabama. Alabama had a bunch of m- missed assignments, and Milrow couldn't check out of nothing. He didn't really understand what was coming. Sometimes empty. So it's going to be a fun game. It's just two heavyweight teams, uh, and they're just they're both really good. And so I'm, I'm excited to watch. Yeah, it, it, it's I, a good I guess point about. In, 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 no, I was going to say the Go sudden ahead. hands. I, well, I, can, I can picture the play you're talking about. I, the sudden hands of just throwing the hands up late. I think Adunze is probably going to be the second receiver too after Marvin Harrison. I know it's him, it's neighbors, but man, he's going to be he's going to be a good pro. I think they got three guys too, well, Bear. They I got three NFL ch- receivers yeah. in Washington. They got yep. three guys that are going to play in the NFL. Yep. 
I would take Roman Dudzi on the Chiefs tomorrow. Like, if the Chiefs could sign him after the game on Monday to play in the playoffs, <laughs> they'd be the favorite in the AFC. Like, they need one wide receiver, and Roman so Dudzi would do it. But Rome and McMillan and Polk, I mean, McMillan being healthy is a huge deal for them. And Penix is healthy, too, which I think he wasn't yeah. down the stretch. So, really a lot of things going in, in Washington's favor. It'd be a lot of fun to watch uh, and see kind of, you know, if contrasting styles and who, who wins out. Any other derivatives uh, that, that you've seen out there? Either you, Will or Sammy, on the, the title game. I had one other question, but it doesn't have to do with the title game, but I just wanted to put a ball in the title game if, if there was anything else out there that you guys look at. No, I'd probably look at Corum over rushing yards. I mean, you always have to play it out in terms of how you think the game's going to go, and I think, like I said, Michigan's going to dominate with the running game, so maybe over Corum rushing yards. I think it's 102 and a half in that range. And if you think Michigan has a lead, gets a lead, maybe you look at Penix over attempts. Again, if you can parlay those, I mean, as long as you're not getting uh, too worked over on the juice, those are correlated. Where all right, Michigan gets a lead, Corm gets his rushing yards, his rushing attempts, and then Penix has over attempts. So th those would be the ones just based on you know the game script and how I think it's going to go. I haven't bet one yet, but 20, I, I, my, I, my wheels spinning on Penix pick. I, I haven't looked at props yet. I wonder what Penix to throw a pick is. If I could get like plus one ten or plus fifteen, I might take it. it it's fun. It's funny, well, because I was thinking about the Corm rush prop as well. He has 200 yard games this year. He, he would have gone over that rut, the, the total of whatever 105 and right. a half, whatever it is, only once on the Penn State game is the one. And that's kind of the, 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 the comp here that I think we're going to get for uh, for this game. So it, that, that, that is an interesting, an interesting play. But the, the question I had for, uh, and, and it's something we brought up a couple of months ago. We, we, we brought up number one pick in the draft now that we know you, you mentioned it, Dunze being probably the second receiver off the board. I, the, the, the Bears obviously will will have the, the number one pick and they can kind of do what they want now. Like, do we think uh, Drake may or, or, or Caleb Williams? Do, do we think it's a lock that it's Caleb? Do we think it's Drake? Who, who, who do you, who do you think will be the, uh, the, the first pick, Sammy? I, I know we made a, we made a good case for, for Drake a couple of months ago. Do you think that's changed? Caleb's still more likely. I mean, obviously he's the favorite. Let, let's just say, let's call it five teams are desperately in need of a quarterback. And maybe there are five teams that would entertain, you know, picking number one overall. Obviously the Bears are going to have number one and I don't think they're going to keep it. So there might be five teams that trade up to do it. I think three of the five would take Caleb. Maybe one of them takes Drake. Maybe one of them falls for Michael Penix in the national championship game if Washington wins. I mean, I, I have no idea what... NFL organizations are thinking, and I'm not going to pretend like I do, but in terms of mathematics of the five teams that I believe need a quarterback and would potentially move up to go number one, I think three of the five, 60% would take Caleb Williams. Wait, wait, yeah, so it's gonna, the, the bears it's are going to keep too, Justin yeah. Fields. Is that, I don't wait, think so. The bears are keeping Justin Fields. Is that what we're going with here? Sammy? I think mean, they do. They yeah. trade out. They're keeping fields, right? I've said that all year. So if gonna, they wait, so the Packers out of the playoffs, they're gonna they're gonna think long and hard about it. <laughs> so they're gonna keep Fields, and that means they're picking him as fifth year option, or they're extending him like a long term contract, like a forty million dollars a year guy. Is that because you, you if you pass on Caleb Williams or Drake May, you're saying that Justin Fields is our long term quarterback, right? I mean, you're not passing on him for right. one year of one more audition year for Fields, right? So you're you paying him forty million dollars a year to be your quarterback? That that'd be insane. Okay, but like I said, of the like, if they keep the pick, they're going to take Caleb. If they trade the pick, somebody else is going to yes. take Caleb. But I, Field still has two years left of team control. And I know this is the college football show, but look, there's a there's a serious thing going on in that locker room right now where the team wants to keep Fields. And if if they bounce the Packers out of the playoffs, I'm not saying it's the right decision, but you put Fields and you put Marvin Harrison on one side and DJ Moore on the other, and you draft Latu or Dallas Turner, or maybe you take another tackle. Like you can win next year with Fields, and then you know the fifth year is obviously a different conversation. But we'll see. Yeah, I, like that's the thing, Will. I, I, it, it's in Jeff. I mean, I mean, it, 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 yeah, it is the college pod, not the pro pod. But it, but I think it's it all kind of comes together here because you're looking at would you rather pay fee? Because I, I think there's a there might be a benefit either way, and I, I'd like to get all of your opinion on this and. And maybe Jeff, just because you're so fam you're more familiar with the dynamic of it, having lived through it, like would you rather pay Fields and get pick up his fifth year option and extend him, and then have a butt end? 
you trade out of one and you're getting a couple of other rookies, immediate rookie starters on rookie deals around him. And you're able to kind of get and get lower, lower cost people around him. Or would you rather say, okay, we're not paying fields. We're moving on from, we're trading him. We're going to take Caleb number one. We're going to have the rookie deal and you can spend the money elsewhere around him for veteran guys. So I, I think, I think there's an argument to be made in both scenarios. Isn't there Jeff? I don't think there's any argument to be made. You, you okay. pay Justin Fields uh, and, and you build around him. Look, Justin Fields has not been efficient passer in his first three seasons as starting quarterback. He's a great athlete. He makes some good throws. He obviously is very athletic and he can run. But the, the question becomes, guys, is he going to turn into the efficient passer you need to win a Super Bowl? Like that, that's what it comes down to right. in the NFL. Yeah, being able to, 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 move in, to move is great. Being able to navigate the pockets even better. But the, the, the Super Bowl champions, guys, are guys that throw efficiently from the pocket, okay? Um, does he throw efficiently enough from the pocket? History will tell you. He's got three if, picks in three if, years. If, if, you're, if you're inefficient through two years, you're very rarely an efficient quarterback the rest of your career. Josh Allen's the breaker of that mold. But now three years of, of, of being an inefficient passer, now all of a sudden he's going to break out and be a, a good passer now in year four, five, six, seven. There's, I think there's two quarterbacks in sort of like the last, the modern era. I mean, that's a long time, but I can say 30 years. It's Alex Smith and Josh Allen who started their careers as inefficient passers and then year three, your three, four, five, six became something else, right? Alex Smith, obviously, when Harbaugh got there, transitioned to a better passer than with Andy Reid. And then obviously we saw what Josh Allen has done really in year two and on. And so is that the path for fields? I mean, look, I'm never going to say no. It can certainly happen. But you have the ability to draft Caleb Williams and then the ability to have another first-round pick that you have, right? You have two first-round picks. You use that on someone to help him. And you have a young quarterback, which is the way that everyone's building, right? Patrick Mahomes is the first quarterback, I think, to win a Super Bowl commanding over 12% of the salary cap or some, something like that. I mean, are you paying fields $40 million a year and winning a Super Bowl? I, I don't see it, Will. And he's not going to, you know, him, his agent, he's not going to say, all right, I'll, I'll take a discount or whatever. I mean, he's going to want a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Even these average quarterbacks get a lot, a lot of money. And it just, it, it, that GM didn't draft him. And you worry with his play style too. Can you keep him healthy? He runs a lot, takes a lot of sacks, takes a lot of hits. I think they've been, look, he's played okay. He's he's improved, but I think they're winning really with uh, an improved defense. The Bears defense, their emergence has been one of the more unpredictable stories of the year. I mean, we were sitting at the beginning of the year. That team was just a disaster. They were lost, what, 40 one nothing to the Chiefs. They played unbelievable defense. And the best thing you can have in the NFL, the way the salary structure and everything, is a good defense and a quarterback on a rookie deal. And if you can just put Caleb Williams or May with that defense, you trade Fields. Fields has played well enough where he's going to get you a pick, and that's another conversation. What's he worth? Is he, Can you get a one? Is it a three? Is it somewhere in between? Mm -hmm. But you add that to the, the pick with, with, with all your other picks, your own pick, the Carolina pick. I mean, you're in good shape here. I would just, to me, the money and the injury concern with Fields would keep me off of paying him. I don't know that they're going to do it. Maybe this these wins, this streak has talked him into, hey, we'll run it back with Fields. If I'm the Bears, I, I want the younger, cheaper player and and i'll build that way that said though that said and again i never said pay fields big time i said you have fields under yes, you control did. Next yes, year, you did. and then you I have the fifth year right okay yeah they have a better chance to win with justin fields or a rookie quarterback that paints his nails i'll wait nails yeah okay <laughs> nails. i pictured jeff but, schwartz yeah, i you, picture a Jimmy. grizzled I picture a grizzled Jeff Schwartz at age 30 after a big loss. Jeff Schwartz comes back to his locker, and the quarterback is crying in Jeff's arms. And Jeff's like, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. <laughs> they, they have to pick up his option in March, though, for his fifth-year option. So you have to decide, yeah. like, now whether or not you're going to pay him in year five. So that's the thing. Is you would Obviously, if they pick it up, I think it's very likely that they would keep him. Um, and then, obviously, the, look. They're going to get a, a, a grand haul for the pick. I mean, someone's going to trade up and trade, you know, they'll spend a lot, of, a lot of draft picks to get there. So you're going to build your roster out that way. But I just don't believe Fields is that guy. So that's that, that's the decision they have to make. 40 touchdowns, 30 interceptions, been sacked 130 times in his three years. His quarterback rating is 31.4, 54, 56.3, 46 46.3. Those are his QBRs over three years. So it, it, it's, I, it's a tough deal, but I, I, I think, uh, I think I'd probably cut the cord. I, I think I really would. I, I would try to avoid being prisoner of the moment with what we've seen uh, the last four games and kind of 
what the first 35 were. It, it's it's a rough cutthroat deal, but uh, he's he played better. Play he's gave him something think. to think about. He hasn't made it like a no brainer like it was maybe a month or two ago. He's he's at least given right. us something to think about. Before we wrap up the college uh, the college group chat, um, any thoughts on the uh, the FCS game? Anybody uh, got South Dakota State 12 and a half, 49 and a half over Montana down in Frisco? Sammy, will anything on that or no? You're allowed to say no. Sammy, what, who's Brown playing, Sammy? Brown is dead. Brown, is, it's over for Brown, uh, <laughs> unfortunately. I have a guy who's really good at college uh, FCS, and he likes Montana. Uh, he's like, well, I took 14. I'm like, great, it's 12 and a half. <laughs> you know, like, you know, we all have that buddy who's like, oh, yeah, I like this, but I got it at that. Sure. He did get it. He showed me the slip. I would take 13 and a half with Montana if it if it gets there. We're 13 at a couple shops now. I know South Dakota State just won by a million points in the last game against Albany. But Montana actually has a defense that could make it interesting. I would take it before I would lay it. I haven't decided yet. And uh, no, I did not get 14. So I can't say that uh, you should take 14 <laughs> either. Well, make sure you let us know if the bartender chimes in at any point. Oh, the, the NBA next- wager last night, to Sammy, <laughs> this my favorite. Oh, I just I can't believe it. I, I I woke up this morning to a an NBA wager cash for the first time this year. You know what's funny too? He he texts me that I love the Thunder, and I in four years he's never texted me anything about the NBA. <laughs> and then the play goes out, and I got three DMs like this guy's not real. And I thought to myself, you know what? If he's real or not, does it even matter? No, like, look at the results. Does it even matter anymore? It's like Santa Claus. The presents <laughs> are under the tree. It doesn't matter who brought them. That's it's right. <laughs> well, hopefully we got some presents there in this, uh, this title game. We've had some hits. We've had some misses. But uh, we've had a lot of fun uh, kicking it around this season. So appreciate all you guys' insight. And uh, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll, we'll cash here on Monday night. I'm a little worried, Bear, that all of us like Michigan, I think, in this game. I don't I don't know if I like them per se, but I wouldn't bet against Washington. I'll put it like that. Um, Michigan, I think, has more paths to win. Washington sort of has one path to win. Um, now, obviously, we're recording this on Thursday, so there's not – all the props are not available for, for this game. Uh, we do have best bets. We do have other leans. Yep. Where are you sort of best bet, lean? Where are you thinking of for this game? One play that I – Again, you're mentioning about things that are up, not up yet. I haven't been able to find it. I'm sure it's going to get posted. I would look at playing no defensive or special teams touchdowns in this game. Okay. You've got two offenses that, for the most part, really don't turn the ball over Correct. very much. So the odds of a pick six or a scoop and score probably slim, especially I think Michigan's going to run the ball a lot. So, like, I, I, I don't think we're going to get a defensive. Like, then maybe we get a, a, a you could always get a special teams touchdown with how poorly Michigan special yeah. teams played and Washington special teams weren't necessarily great either against Texas, but I don't know what the price will be on that. Yeah. I, I would look at it and consider, obviously it's going to be favored. You're going to have to lay, lay, lay a number there, but um, I would look at no defensive or special teams touchdown in this case. I, I think, I, I think the, the odds are yeah. slim. We're going to get one. I like, um, a field goal prop. I'm not sure what it's going to be yet, but Washington member kicked three field goals in that yep. game. Texas defense actually played well in the second half, in the fourth quarter, yeah, like it's fourth quarter. kind of keeping in the game. And I think Michigan's game plan is going to be let's, you know, again, I've said this on, on multiple platforms, said it for us on, on the group chat. Like I think their game plan is going to be until the 20 yard line, you're not free to get whatever you want, but we're going to let you take underneath. Mm-hmm. And then the red zone, we're going to clamp down, which forces a lot of field goals. Uh, and I think on the flip side, I mean, look, when you run the ball as much as Michigan does, you can get backed up sometimes and do you get backed up into field goals, you know? And so I think field goal, like any sort of, I don't know, three and a half field goals in this game, four and a half field goals, four and a half, probably three and a half, four and a half, four and a half seems high, but three and a half, I can see that. I think over three and a half would be good. It's not, it's not obviously up yet. All right. Let's get to your best bet for this game. Obviously one game. Yep. You have a way drawn. I have a way drawn. What's your best bet? I like Michigan minus three and a half at the second half. Of the game. I, I, I know it's a little like way out there, but again, I, I think the way this game is going to be played, it's going to rem- be reminiscent of what Michigan did against Penn state when they went on the road 
Okay. And he just kind of ran. Uh, they ran the ball, I think, every play in the second half, with exception of one, which I think that play officially didn't count because I think it was PI yep. on, on Penn State. Right. And the best way to beat Washington, number one, score on them by running the ball. You saw Texas have success running the ball, and that also helps keep Penix and that offense off the field. So I think this is not going to be about J.J. McCarthy putting up 300 yards in his college farewell, if indeed it is. This is about winning a national championship. I think the the best way Michigan can win a national championship, kind of get into halftime maybe with the lead, and then just pound, grind away at the interior of that Washington defense in the second half control the ball, control the clock, uh, and outlast them, wear them down, and maybe get a, get a score late yeah. to ultimately maybe win this game by by double 10 to 14 points. So uh, I, I, I like Michigan minus three and a half in the second half that, uh, based on how I think this game is going to play out. I love a, a pre-flop second half wager. Oh, I love it so much, Barry. There's Sometimes you got to dig deep. Digging deep. It's too All easy right. to say Michigan, Michigan minus four and a half. No, right? I'm not saying Michigan minus four and a half. Not with the way Washington plays close game. I'm going Michigan over... 30 and a half points here, Bear, in this game. Um, the narrative that J.J. McCarthy, like, isn't good came out of the Alabama game. He didn't have his best game. He also made some really good throws. And so far this year, they've played one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight teams as Michigan played that have an SP plus defense better than Washington. Washington's 44th, okay? They've averaged 32.3 points per game. Washington allowed 28 points in the first half to Bryson Barnes in Utah. 33 points to Stanford, 31 to Texas, and Texas had opportunities to score more points there, right? Over 30, twice to Oregon. They allow a ton of points, Bear. This is what their defense is. They play a soft defense once they get up in games. So I think Michigan runs the ball. They put up touchdowns. I think even this is one of those where, like, Michigan's driving down the end of the game. I'm rooting for them to get from 24 to 31. <laughs> Look at that last touchdown of the game. So uh, I like Michigan here over 30 and a half. I'm just not taking... Michigan minus four and a half with Washington's. I just, yeah, I can't do it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, like, like, like Sammy. We were talking about on the group chat. Like, I'm going to wait it out and see. Maybe it's little, not getting. I don't think it's getting down. I don't think it's coming down to like, four. Yeah, same as Alabama, Michigan, right? The public's all in Alabama, right. and and Michigan number did not move. I feel like in this in this situation, the sharps are on Michigan because the 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 number in this game neutral field. I've, I saw SP plus had at twelve. Had twelve on a neutral field. Yeah, and and, and I, you think uh, now when, when you were saying that it popped into my head. In these title games, typically it is public, or people will just take the dog on the money line. Yes, which may give a reduced price on the favorite on the money line, or and, and like you're laying the points w- w- with the favorite, or you're just taking the the dog on the money line. I think that's the that's kind of how how it breaks down. It's funny, a couple of things that I that I was just sitting here thinking about. Um. Where would Washington be if they hadn't basically been had their hand forced in, into firing Jimmy Lake? I'm going to think about it every day. Imagine that, like, like what, they, what did they, Jimmy I think, Lake have to hit that player? I mean, it, 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 yeah, it, it's it's amazing because, and that I mean, he probably should have been fired anyway, just because I don't think no, it's it kept him forever. It was going, <laughs> it was not going to work. But it's it's kind of like a water cooler conversation that you have on social media with people like. Oh, you got to give a coach three years. You got to give a coach four. No, you don't. If it's not going to work and you can kind of tell early on that it might not work, cut bait. I, 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 I miss if, if, if they would have given him a third year, yeah. there's not a chance Michael Penix is there. And there's not a chance there in the national title game yeah. right now. I miss, the, I miss the days when they lost to Montana, though. That was, that was, How about that? Montana and Washington both playing for national titles this week. <laughs> yes. I miss those days, though. And by, the, and by the way, the, bring Jimmy Lake back. And by the way, the UConn Huskies won a national title in Houston on the, on, in college basketball this past year with don't Washington Huskies. Don't, don't I'm, I'm just that, working, it, working it all, all don't together that, for you. I'm, Sammy tried to, to play my, to just destroy me in that, which is funny because I think Oregon could, you know, obviously couldn't beat Washington, but very early, easily could have beat Texas, I think. Yeah. And, and, and it's, it's funny, too. In, the other thing I did this morning on, on the way in because I couldn't do it in, in yeah. Connecticut, I made a bet to win next year's national title. Don't do it. Don't tell me who you took. Who'd you take? Georgia. Oh, Georgia. Okay. Four to one. It's, it's, Four to one. I'm say it's the, the Four to one Oregon. on the team that's going to be the best team in the country. Now, I yeah. think people are going to look at their schedule and be like, oh, you got road games at Alabama, Texas, and Ole Miss. As long as they don't lose all three, they're getting the expanded field. They're going to be. Yeah. They're going to be in and. They were the best team in the country this year. Just yeah. they happened to lose a game at the wrong time. 
they're going to be better next year than they were this like I don't think I don't think you're going to see four to one at any point next year. So yeah, I got to tie up money for a year, but I think I put enough on it to to make it worth it. So uh, yeah, no, I, I, uh, I, think, I think Georgia George will win the national title next year. No, uh, no, thirteen or Liberty win the title next year. <laughs> and, and it's funny the, the the other team that I would consider, I, I considered Oregon to, to to win the national title next year. Just. Here, okay, I'm going to end with this. The reason why I was so excited for Oregon to make a playoff this season is the exact reason why Washington is here right now, okay? Because when you have a, a 14 playoff, you have to win two football games. That's it, two. In a 12-team playoff, if you have a bye, obviously, you have to win three games. It's hard to win three games against top-level components like mm-hmm. this every single week. One play goes wrong, one thing happens this way, you're out. This was the year to do it. If you're a, four, a five through twelve seed, the benefit is you have the home game. If you're a five through eight, you don't you don't win four games in a row probably as a as a lower seed. No, so it actually makes it easier for the top seeds to win. But how many schools in the country have enough depth or have enough special players? Washington has Michael Penix. He, he's special enough to get them through a long playoff. Next year, the playoff starts December twentieth and ends January twentieth. I think it goes for a month long. It's a long playoff. How many teams in the country have the depth to withstand playing three or four games against top 12 opponents? The answer is like four teams, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State. Now, Michigan next year loses. They lose like Alabama. I don't know about them in Ohio State. Sure, but Alabama loses, you know, 15, I mean, uh, Michigan, 15 guys in the NFL after the season. They're not going to be as good next season. By the way, so is Washington. Washington loses almost their entire roster. Washington's kind of a. In the same boat. So this is why this year I think was so important for a team like Oregon to get in there and a team like Washington to get in there because it's it's unlikely you're going to be as good next year. And then also you're in a different conference next year. And this is a year where you have not really a super team like we saw Georgia the last two years. And Washington hit, you know, they they hit it, they hit it right. But Michigan is is the most the most talented, but they have the most NFL bodies probably of any team that was in the college football this season. You, you, you look at look at look at Oregon's road games next year. They go to Oregon State. Yeah, our schedule's not bad. At UCLA. We get Michigan at home. You get Michigan at home. You get Ohio State at home. You get Washington at home. Like your toughest Big Ten road game, I guess, would be at Camp Randall. So it, it's jump around. It's a pretty uh Pretty good. I, I, I pretty am good looking forward though. for Dylan Gate, and and like I said, the, you, you, he's yeah. What Mario recruited there into what Lanning like they're 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 on it's mostly Lanning guys now though. Yeah, so I was going to say into what Lanning's yeah. done. Like they they they're in good footing. Um. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to just maybe like going to a road game that's not that's you know two hours away from me, not having to go all the way to Eugene to watch a game. I, I, I don't know. I have a I have a funny feeling that we might be a. Maybe Big Noon Kickoff might be uh, in Ann Arbor next Saturday, November the 2nd. I'll have to uh, come on. Come Saturday, on. November 2nd. Saturday, is... November 2nd, Oregon at Michigan at the Big House. Oh, we're at Michigan this year. Yeah. Okay. 24th, yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. I'll be there. Maybe. I was going to say. Bear bets on the road. Bear, bear, bear bets on the road. Exactly. Bear bets on the road from Zingerman's Deli. Oh, I'm in. Are, are you familiar with Zingerman's? I've been to the Brown Jug before. I've not been to Zingerman's. See Zingerman's. I've only been there. I've only been to Michigan once. Z- Zinger, Zingerman's will 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 we'll do your. I'll we'll have to work on that. Let's, let's make it happen. We have a year. Well, definitely. We have we have a year. But uh, this year flew by. It, 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 it always it, does. Football season goes so fast. It, 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 it's so funny that we're either going to get kind of like the, the comical middle finger of a Pac-12 team after the conference was ripped apart and destroyed of. Washington winning the national title for, for that, or we're going to get the team involved in a uh, spying scandal <laughs> winning the national title that everybody's making the joke that it's going to be uh, vacated uh, yeah. at some point. But uh, it was fun. Um, would love to have had a few more winners, but hopefully in between that group chat and what we're just talking about here, maybe we'll have a few more to uh, end the year on and uh, maybe start 2024 on. So for Will and Sammy P, for Jeff... Uh, I'm Bear. Thanks again for all the downloads and listening, rating, re- reviewing, subscribing. Uh, we're going to continue this, obviously, throughout the, uh, the off season with the NFL. We'll pop up from time to time around some big events, March Madness, uh, golf majors, tri- crown horse racing, maybe baseball preview here or there. So uh, you, you, you'll, you'll continue, obviously, throughout the NFL playoffs and the Super Bowl. So remember, 
Check us out on all those uh, available ways you've consumed us all year long. And most importantly, when the bartender speaks, <laughs> the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. 